I'd like to show you this new prototyping plugin for Sketch that I've come across. Now, of course, there are many prototyping tools out there from taking your designs to a, a working quick prototype. But the thing I like about this one is firstly, it's integrated into Sketch and also that it's free. So obviously the only requirements here are that you're gonna use Sketch, which is on a Mac only, at least at this time and you need to download and install the plugin. And you can get that here at mirr.io. So once you've got that done, what it actually does is it creates, it installs a small application that is like a, a best described as a small simulator, much like the simulator for Android and iOS. So if I just go ahead and run that to show you quickly, basically what you can do here is you can either drag an existing sketch file onto the simulator, or you can create a new one from the template. And when you create a new one from a template, it creates this sort of quick sample for, file for you. So let's take a, a quick look at that. So I'm gonna say new template. It's gonna create a file on my desktop here, and it's gonna open it in the simulator. Now, if I click continue, you can see that it moves to a page, and I have a second page here, and also this fly out menu. And now if I just move this off to one side, what it's also done here, as you can see, is it's opened the file in Sketch. And the reason for that is you can actually make changes in real time. So if you look and see in the simulator here, we're on page two. So if I go to artboard number two here, which is actually the page two, and I'm just gonna demonstrate for you. If I make a change, um, let's go in here and let's say, let's just delete this content. You're gonna notice that when I go back and give focus to uh, click on the simulator, it's gonna update that page for me. And let's just show you another way here. Let's click on this person here. And if I take this content, I'm just gonna click on there. Actually, I'll tell you what, let's take this here and just nudge it up slightly. And I'm not gonna save it or anything like that and just go back to the uh, simulator. You can see it's adjusted it there in real time. So one of the beauties of this plugin is you can actually work with your designs in real time. And you can actually also call up the URL, assuming your device is on the same network, and you can actually view them on your phone or tablet or whatever mobile device you need to see it on as well. Now that's all well and good, but I'm gonna now show you from scratch how we create our own. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this file in Sketch, and I'm actually gonna quit the, uh, the Mir.io application as well. So let's go ahead and get rid of that file. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and create our own file. So in Sketch, I'm gonna create a new empty file. You can see there's nothing special here. Um, I'm gonna add an artboard, iPhone 8, there we go. And let's just move it across because we're gonna wanna use a couple more here. So I'm gonna add a couple more artboards. Let's add that one and let's add another one more as well. Okay, so we've got three artboards. Right, now let's go ahead and go up to the plugins menu and you can see that actually the mir.io, there's, you can actually add events and we'll get to that in a minute and launch the simulator. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and launch the simulator now and it's gonna load up my, my sketch file and what I'm gonna do is just move it off to one side and I'm gonna move sketch over here so we can see them both. Now there is a little thing to be aware of here in Sketch and the, in particular the Mir.io simulator, it's gonna load up the first artboard, which in this case is this one here, this iPhone 8 one. There's another way you can go here, and actually I think this makes a lot of sense anyway. It's also gonna look for one called Start. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and rename this artboard to Start, because I don't think you should use these generic names anyway. So. I'm actually gonna go ahead and rename the others. Let's call this one Details. And then let's call the last one, um, let's just call it Shape for now. Okay, so on the first artboard, it's now gonna go for the, look for this start name and that'll be the one that actually gets loaded up here. And let's start adding some content. So I'm gonna add, let's just add sort of a, a shape for a button here. This is gonna be a terrible design, but it's just a demonstrate prototype there. 
application and demonstrate it. So you can see that if I give this focus, instantly we've got our button here. Of course, it's not a button yet, but it soon will be. Let's go ahead and add some text to that button. So I'm just going to say click. Make the text a little smaller here because it's rather large right now. Let's just drop it down to 72. There we go. Okay. Let's just reposition that into there. Now on the details page, this is going to be the one we're going to go to when you click on this button. So let's add something just so we know that we've navigated to that page. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just let's just put a circle in here. And then on this shape page, this may be like an extra details page. So let's go ahead and add another shape. Let's just put a little star on this one here. And what happens is, oops, let's do that again. When you click on this star, we're going to want to navigate to that third page. And let's just change couple of properties here so they're not all so boring. Okay, now on the last one, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to want to go back to the first page, the first screen with the click button. So I'm actually just going to add an arrow here. And I'm going to say, okay, that's just kind of like our, our back arrow. Pretty terrible design right now, I think you'll agree, but it'll serve its purpose for what we need. So in fact, it's going to be interesting to see if we can click on something that small. Let's let's make this a little thicker here, shall we? It's, there you go. That's pretty awful. Okay. Now, when we comes to adding the interaction, just first of all, let's just show you here. We've got the click button, and I'm trying to click on it, and nothing happens. Okay. So back in Sketch, I'm going to take this this shape here. And I'm actually gonna, there's two ways you can do this. You can either use the keyboard shortcut, which is option command A, or you can go up to the plugin here menu and just say add event. So I'm gonna add an event. And that event is gonna be, let's just bring up the list, okay? I want you to tap. And when you tap, I want to slide from the right to the details artboard. In fact, it's already filled it in for me. Okay, and I'm just gonna go okay. Now I've got to save this file, so I'm just going to save it to my desktop and call it test. There we go. And then on this details page here, I'm going to select the star. I'm going to do option command A, and I'm going to add the tap event again. And this time I'm going to say slide from the left, just to show you a different one. But I want it to go to the shape artboard. Okay, again, that's the name up there. I'm just going to go OK. And then when you click on this terrible arrow button, what I'm going to want you to do, okay, option command A, and on this one, tap, I'm going to want to slide from the right, and I'm going to want to go back to the start, and I'm going to go OK. So what's going to happen here is I can click on this button, and it will take me to the detail screen. I can click on the star, it'll take me to the shape screen, and then I'm going to click on this terrible arrow, and it's going to take me back to start. That's the theory. So let's go ahead and test it. Okay, so now I'm going to click on the click button. It takes me to the second screen and I'm going to click on the star and it's going to navigate me to the arrow. Of course, it's backwards there on what you would really want to do on the transitions, but I just wanted to show that there are different transitions. And then I'm going to click on the arrow and it's going to take me back to the original screen. So that's very simply how it works, but let's just fix this up so that it looks a little more proper. So I'm actually going to want this one to slide from the right and go OK. And then on this one, again, to, to bring it up, I'm doing Option Command A. And if one's already assigned, you're basically in edit mode. I'm going to want this one. Actually, let's do this. Let's slide from the bottom. So let's got those going. OK, let's go back over and look again. I'm going to click. Now I've got the star, I'm going to click the star. Now I've got the arrow and it's going to slide back up from the click. Okay, so that's the basics of using the plugin. I think it's pretty straightforward and I think it's pretty awesome. So uh, the only weirdness I've encountered is with some of the built-in iOS template controls. And I have spoken to the author and they've said that they are actually working to look at that for me. So 
Um, you may experience a little bit of weirdness there, but this is a way you can quickly create your pro working prototypes in Sketch without having to export or create any code or anything like that. So I think for a free plugin, it's pretty awesome. Check it out. Again, it's mirr.io. I'll bring up the web page here. Just download it, install it, and away you go.